Hey guys, this is Hardy from Digital Painting Studio. Today I have a workflow to share. It's this ridiculously efficient way to turn line art like this into something that looks very polished but takes very little time. We'll do a character for this demo, but this works for creatures, vehicles, pretty much anything. There are three main parts that I'll take you through, and at the end of the video, I'll show you the best part of this whole approach. It's something that can really make a difference for professional concept artists, so I think this will be really valuable. Let's get started. I'll be using Photoshop for this demo, but the process is practically identical on any popular digital painting app, so if you're using something like Procreate, the steps are practically the same. Now to get started, we want to convert our line art figure into a solid silhouette of color. We basically want to fill in the interior of this line art with color. And we can use the line art to do that. If we just grab the magic wand tool, click on the outside of the character, and also hold down shift and click on any negative shapes that this little bit where her arm is folded is creating. And then we go to select inverse. That gives us a selection of inside of the figure. Now all we have to do is create a new layer and I'm going to put that underneath the line art and just fill it in with pretty much any color by holding down option and delete. Now one thing to pay close attention to is your line art has to be perfectly continuous. There can be no gaps, no holes, in any of this line art all the way around the figure. If there is a little gap, and I'm erasing one away just to show you, if we try to make the same selection steps with the magic wand tool, it selects the outside and also the inside. It doesn't quite work. So it's worth taking a second to check around the entire perimeter of your line art to make sure there are no gaps. And if there aren't, it should work fine. The next step in the process is just to fill in flat colors for each material on this character. So what we're going to do is use this base silhouette layer to create selections over and over again. If you command click on the thumbnail for that layer, it will create a selection of the character's interior. That's going to be hugely useful because now it's just a matter of creating new layers and starting to color in each part of the character. I'm starting with the skin and I'm just using the brush tool to color in each part of the character solidly. Think of when you were a kid filling in a coloring book, same exact thing. We want to color within the lines, really pay attention to those borders between different materials so I don't want the skin to bleed over into the jacket. I want to keep things nice and neat and really do a good job of defining each area of the character very crisply. Each time I jump to a new part of the character, I create a new layer and I name it. We're going to use these layers individually to give us a lot of control later in the process. So it really is worth the time to just take that second and name each layer. And I've also got them organized in this layer group called flat colors. This part of the process takes a while. It's definitely the most time consuming, but it's worth it. Do a good job. Really respect those borders that your line art has created. Define each part of the character really cleanly and it'll pay off. And you can see with each part of the character that we finish coloring in, it's starting to look way more polished and finished. It's incredible how just a little bit of flat color can transform simple line art into something that looks like it's very professional and polished. We are not limited to just solid colors in each one of these materials. This is a good part in the process to add patterns. So I'm adding some stripes to the pants. I'm going to add some tattoo designs to the arms, maybe even a pattern for the scarf around her neck. So don't feel limited by just flat colors. Feel free to get creative. This is the step where we want to make these design decisions. Now 
Now, here is the real power of working this way. Because we have each material on its own layer, we can adjust the color to anything that we want. All you have to do is hit Command U to bring up hue saturation adjustments in Photoshop, and you can turn any part of the character into any color you can imagine. So tinker with this, play around with different color schemes, see what works for you. Now that we have our colors defined, it's time to start adding a little bit of polish and dimension to this character. We're going to do that with some shadows. So I have command clicked on the base silhouette to get a selection of the entire character, and I'm going to fill in a new layer with this solid bluish gray color. Then I'll set that layer to multiply and add a layer mask. I fill the layer mask with black so that it's totally hidden, and then we start to selectively reveal this shadow layer in certain parts. It's like we're painting with a shadow color, but because this is a multiply layer, it reacts dynamically with every color underneath. So if we change that jacket to be bright orange, for example, the multiply layer will still make that shadow version of the orange look correct. That's the beauty of multiply. It reacts dynamically. Whether it's skin, leather, pants, a jacket, a tattoo, everything will have the correct shadow color just because it is underneath this multiply layer. This is the key to why this process is so efficient. So I'm thinking a little bit about light and shadow. Where is my light source? Where do things cast shadows? And it starts to give the character a nice sense of three-dimensionality. We're keeping it really simple, just basic flat shadows. Either the light is shining here or it's not, and it keeps this nice graphic look. Now to balance out the shadows, let's add a highlight layer. Once again, I'll command click to get a selection of the entire character, and we'll fill that in with this light brownish color. And we will set that to screen blending mode. This makes this color react dynamically to all the colors underneath it, much like multiply, except it brightens things rather than darkens them. I use highlight pretty sparingly. In fact, I'm mainly just using it to give the metallics a very high contrast shine. In this style, a little bit of highlight goes a long way. For a little bit of extra accent, I'm doing a second highlight layer and adding a little bit of edge light, kind of lighting the side of the character's face giving this really cool cinematic feel, this edge lighting to add a bit of drama and finish. The final polish step in this workflow is to add a few glows and blooms just to make this seem dramatic and really finished. I do that by filling in some solid layers with a really warm color, like this intense pink, and I set that to screen blending mode. Once again, we mask it out, and I will selectively reveal this with a soft airbrush just to make some very subtle glows, kind of baking around the edges of the character. It gives this really atmospheric lens flare and bloom effect that just makes the character somehow seem important and dramatic. It's subtle, but these little finishing steps really make a difference. They make your finished work seem more professional, more polished, and it takes practically no time at all to add this final step. And that's basically it. We have gone from line art to a very polished, very presentable finished design in practically no time. Here's the really game-changing part of this workflow. Once we have all of our layers set up in our finished character, our flat colors, our shadows and highlights, and our color modifications, we can just copy all of these layers and easily create a second or third version of the character. Once you've copied all of the layers, all you have to do is go back into your flat colors folder and just start doing hue saturation adjustments on each part of the character that you want to change. 
It's incredible how powerful this is. It looks like a completely different character and all we have changed is a few colors. This is incredibly useful to a concept artist. You can give your clients second or third looks. You can iterate with as many versions as they might want to see. Clients love that. They want to have options. They want to really explore different looks. In this way of working, setting your layers up in this way makes it take just minutes to create an entire new version of the character you've created. Really cool. I hope you found this useful. Give this a try. You'll be amazed at how much flexibility, efficiency, and creative freedom it brings to your designs. More tutorials like this coming in the weeks ahead. In the meantime, good luck with your artwork. Paint something cool today.